All right, great break, guys. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> wow. That I'm was still... crazy and will never happen again. No, my legs are still sore from running so fast, you know? <laughs> ben, Ben's going to have to cut a bit. He's got the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the other Ben may have to bleep out what I just said. But anyway. <laughs> so, so I think it's time for uh, why don't they uh, just cut, cut a stuff why don't they just oh. uh, so today's why don't they just comes from robert allen on the tweeters he says why don't they just create large-scale methane plants using the sabatier reaction to extract co2 and water from the atmosphere to make methane to use in rockets this will become second nature when we need it on mars and the reason why i picked this one was Weren't there rumors they were doing this at Boca Chica? I, uh, Did I see that somewhere? It's not necessarily... Elon's mentioned that they will do that at some point, and that's part of the plan. Mm. Um, mm. But I don't know if we have any concrete evidence that they're beginning to actually do that yet. I know they're working... I think the next step they're working on is making their own oxygen on site using renewable energy is the first step, but mm. I don't haven't seen anything specifically yet of them making methane on site for the Sabatier, using the Sabatier process. Mm. So... So yeah, why don't we? Why don't why don't they just do that, guys? It sounds like a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> so here's my question. This is sort of adjacent to it. Um, I know that the air pressure on Mars is far less than here, uh, and the concentrate. Well, the the amount of CO two is far higher. I guess my question is, would it be easier or harder to? Uh, mm to collect CO2 to create methane in this process on Mars versus Earth? That's a very good question. Because, um, I mean, it, it's 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 less dense on Mars, but that you might be, a, I mean, it's a far higher concentration. Of it, it is there, a lot so higher you, concentration, but it's, um, I think, still substantially less CO2 than even here on Earth, though. So, but you, you wouldn't know, have to, like, I mean, I don't know how it all works, but you wouldn't have to, like, separate it out. As much, yeah. Yeah. I don't really know. That. I don't know. Either. Might be less intensive, yeah. So, yeah, that that process of, of just purely extracting the CO2 from the atmosphere might be a lot easier. But as far as um, you won't have as high of pressure to work with, you know, on your machines, but maybe right. that's not a big deal. You know, maybe you're just sucking in air and, you know, compressing it in the machine. And I have no idea, you know. Well, know. I imagine one way or another they're going to have to figure out uh, – uh, a, a, an elegant system that could be taken up to Mars and be sat there and just like make fuel. Yeah. Um, so they're going to have to work on that at some point anyway. So, we, you know, I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't just go ahead and do that right there at Boca Chica while they're launching a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think the reason why it's not like this common thing that like people will just have in their backyards and then sell the methane off to Elon Musk is because <laughs> The the react using the Sabatier process, although it's like efficient in terms of like you can do it using, you know, taking CO2 out of the air and just using water for the rest of the, the process is the electrolysis is, is extremely inefficient. So, yeah. you know, using electricity to split hydro, uh, H2O into hydrogen and oxygen is really, really a poor use of electricity. You're better off selling, you know, having solar, selling it off to on the grid because it's, you know, like 10 times more you know you can use it basically 10 times more and then mm -hmm. buying regular energy out you know and doing steam reforming and buying methane that way you like as far as financially that's why it's not like this commonplace thing because it's there's a lot better use of electricity and the sabatier process does rely on uh you know it relies on that process that electrolysis um so is this similar to what they do with hydrogen i'm unfamiliar with this process but it sounds a lot like the same concept where you have water it, and electricity and you no yeah that's exactly that right case. that's that's the um that's the the uh, electrolysis portion of extracting hydrogen that's why you don't typically see hydrogen being created that way because it, they just steam reform it it's a lot cheaper right a lot and cheaper so this case he was suggesting again forgive me if i'm, I'm off on this but using methane to make methane no <sighs> Just well, using but, but we'll read it again. That's what it said, right? Um, the the Sabatier process pulls CO two from the atmosphere and also uh -huh. does the electrolysis process to 
to to take CO2, combine it with hydrogen, and then you also have your oxygen for your rocket. So you have all of your rocket fuel using the Sabatier process. Mm. Um, so why aren't we just like setting up solar fields and just starting to extract CO2 from the atmosphere now, you know, doing high electrolysis and blah, 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 blah. And, and just doing this right away, right now, just commonly, and then just mm. selling the methane off everywhere, you know? Yeah. I think there's two different ways to read this as a why don't they just. There, there's one, and this is probably what, what Robert was intending, was, you know, kind of, he, he, say, he says large-scale methane plants to extract CO2 and water and, and make methane. Um, so, so I think you're answering that pretty well, Tim, and it just economically it just doesn't make sense, like, you know, financially. But... Uh, but the other way of looking at it is kind of the way I was approaching it, which is um, in terms of like creating something that they are going to have to take on Mars or take to Mars to to do it there. Um, sort of like just a development process going on at Boca Chica to to you know perfect that before they take it up. Like, why don't they? Are they doing it? that? Uh, is that in the works? Is that in the plans? Like that's kind of where I was approaching it from. So my I my understanding is that is a hundred percent in the plan. Yep. Yeah. Is to be self reliant out there, Boca Chica, or anywhere Starship is built, to be able to do the Sabatier process. Um, and and ironically, if you think about this, I haven't really thought about this until now, but on Mars, they only have to fuel up the top portion of Starship. Like just the Starship thing is only what's going to land on Mars. It has to be refueled mm -hmm. on Mars to make it back home. On Earth, you have to fuel up Starship and the super heavy booster. But the electricity required on Earth is about a quarter, you know, um, or the solar field size is about a quarter of the size here on Earth compared to what the amount of solar you need on Mars to produce the same amount of electricity because it's, mm. um, all, you know, 1.6 astronomical units away or whatever. It, it ends up, I think, being almost exactly twice. You need double the amount of solar on Mars compared to on Earth to produce the same amount of electricity. So really, their, their solar fields will probably be almost similar sized if they're trying to run, you know, these Sabatier farms or these methane farms on Earth to do super heavy and Starship compared to. So they'll have a system kind of in place that that would probably be fairly similar to be able to do super heavy and Starship compared to just Starship on Mars. So there's a very direct correlation there between doing it here on Earth and, and practicing it and doing it on Mars when it really matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah, so that's, I think that, I, I, I don't know if I'm, and actually uh, Theo, if I remember right, is is a, an actual scientist. <laughs> uh, so Theo, uh, let's see, make sure that we're um, Tim, <laughs> how do you launch off of Mars from, with uh, a starship? You need a launch pad, right? Or can you just launch off the dirt? Um, The plan currently is to launch off the dirt, okay. I guess. Okay, uh, but uh, but you'll have to refuel there? Yes, you absolutely have to refuel there. Okay, and and that will require a structure to fuel it, right? You can't just like carry a bucket and like dump it in or something, right? <laughs> the, the kind of the, <laughs> like the, it'll the require idea... some sort of infrastructure built before you can like launch again. Something like that, and you know, there's probably going to be dedicated starships that will have to land. That you know, maybe one carries a bunch of solar panels and a robot that lays them all down plugs them all in, you know, does this whole field. The other one then maybe has this, the Sabatier reaction thing in it, you yeah. know, and then, a, a, you know, another one has this thing that runs the pipes to do refuel the next starship that lands nearby. Maybe they do have to set up a berm for the one right, that lands, right. the final one that lands so it doesn't destroy the nearby starships. Like there's definitely, it's not like this easy thing. It's yeah, very Yeah, it's kind of sounds... Like the first mission will be for that essentially. Like, okay, yeah. your job is just to make it out of here. <laughs> like, like you're not really going to do much science here. You're just going to be building stuff the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. Or unless that's easy. Unless they have some like IKEA way of doing it, you know. <laughs> well, I think that's <laughs> why I'm, printing. That's why like the robotics will be so key for Mars, you know. Mm -hmm. And smart robotics, they can do it without because we can't like control them here. Really, it's you know with that huge delay. Just doesn't make any sense. So you have to have smart enough robots that can, you know, visually and okay. and understand. So that's one of those things that Tesla, you know, that's why Elon's companies are so well integrated. You know, one's vision and and AI is good enough, you know, on Earth and full self driving is really figured out. That technology will be extremely useful on the surface of Mars. Being able to have a vehicle that just is spatially aware of it, you know, has a really deep grasp of spatial awareness i think will be absolutely vital i wonder how 
I wonder how close we are to that because it's th that's a true test of AI because the well I guess maybe maybe if they're like sending out Teslas in the desert somewhere it might be a similar landscape so it would have a reference point. Well, there's right? the Dakar like, race or whatever. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the one that's through the desert from. Is it? It's to the, it's, it's to Las Vegas, right? From like no, the Dakar race, I believe, is in Africa. Oh, okay. Um, I'm thinking something else. There were these self-driving races, some of the first ones ever, I thought, and it was like yeah. a Hummer that they had made. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that I was in Vegas. Hmm. Maybe it is. I, I always thought for some reason that was in Africa, but mm. yeah, the same type of thing where it's re that relies a lot on lidar. You know, a really viable system there, but I, I wonder how much of that will be, you know usable with Tesla's technology too, so. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.